Hey, sometimes here you get knocked down, you got to get back up. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. It's all in how much preparation, how much hard work you're willing to put in here on the field. Well, we found someone expert in her field who's just as tough on the soccer pitch as she is in the classroom. So how long have you been teaching? Since 1960, which makes it about 50 some years. I don't, I don't count them anymore. They just, it's only a number. You know, it's kind of like age. Mm -hmm. Can you do anything about it? No, it comes and goes and you just live with it. But it is the way Jan Luton has been living that is inspiring so many, inside the classroom and outside on the soccer fields. But what does that tell you about her? That, that she still has that not only competitive nature, but the desire to give out and sort of live life even, you know, at an age where most people are kicking back. She's determined. I'm, I'm sure that you have to take great care of your body to play till you're 75. And she takes, it's just like anything. I feel like she has a great personality and a great uh, demeanor and like a way to be in life with the, the way she played a sport till 75 and the way she holds herself in the classroom. I think like, She's a, a big inspiration, of, a good person to be. First off, can you do the, the Pele bicycle kick? Uh, no. Not, not anymore? No, not at all. <laughs> I tell you where my interest came when my husband started the program in Bettendorf and a friend, Gloria, and I coached our kids, which you've probably done too. And we thought, hmm, that looks like fun. So, she and I got together and we thought, let's organize a women's league, and it hatched. 1980, and I was involved in it for 35 years, and I thought, ah, that's enough, I'll do something else. So, I think it still is in existence, I'm not sure what capacity, but uh, at one time we had 10 teams in it, mm -hmm. and we would have a game in the spring and a game in the fall. Inspiring thousands of women to push themselves to reach their goals. You know, it only makes sense that a soccer ball has also become a tool in the classroom. What I use that for is when we study vocabulary, I will say, okay, Gary, and I'll toss you the ball and give you a word, and you have to tell me what that word means. And if you can't tell me what it is, you have to hand it back to me. So it kind of goes around the classroom. It's fun in that they wonder if they're going to get it, if they're going to catch it, and then if, uh, they know what the word is. So I try to use it academically, even though it's a physical ball. And they're using their hands playing yes, soccer, which, uh, you know. <laughs> so, but you, you played up until not too long ago. Yeah, I play, played until I was about 75, about five years ago. And I just referee now, uh, put up with parents. <laughs> So you've been putting up with their kids all this time, now you have to deal with parents and the kids. No, the, sometimes these parents on the sidelines are rather demanding of their children, and I thought, be quiet, just let them play, have fun. That, I tell you, was the golden rule in the Women's League from the beginning. Exercise and fun. Every, and some people who were so intent on being a Pele, weren't satisfied with that, but it was consistent through the whole thing, and we did have fun. So I have to ask, if you have the competitive spirit, which I figure you do, did you ever use elbows and do No, 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 no. Unsportsmanlike, oh no. You're gonna ask me if I ever got a red card? No, no, no. You can have fun and not be vicious. Playing with your team and against another team, it's all good exercise. Honestly, I think I'll remember the most that she just, she, she wants you to do your best. Yeah, she's, she's going to challenge you and sometimes call you out for your mistakes, but she definitely wants you to do your best and she's excited for us and she loves teaching and she really wants to push us for college. Odds are you at least had one teacher that brought out the best in you. I know I did came in quiet, reserved, didn't know what their potential was. And then you get to watch them and help oh, them yes. blossom over time. Oh yes, yes. And the pride that comes with it. They don't brag, 
but the pride that comes with, yes, I can answer a question. Yes, I, I had a student once, I give 10 points for an essay. And when I handed them back, she says, Mrs. Luton, can I take a picture of this? I have to show it to my mom. It's the first 10 she got. And I thought, go ahead, go ahead. She was so proud of that and she did a great job. I try to reward them when they do well because that makes them believe in themselves, I think. I want to about, tell you about a teacher that, that impacted my life. So when I wrote my first book uh, about 10 years ago, which my son Adam helped me with, by the way, I wrote something about my eighth grade teacher, Mrs. Dillon, in this book. And she saw this, she came across this book, and we had been out of touch for more than 40 years. Oh, yes. And she was touched by what she read and reached out to me through Facebook, which you can now do. Mm -hmm. But back then, if, if a teacher inspired you, you'd never see that teacher again. Right. They would never right. really know. Right. So I got in contact with her, we built a relationship, we stay in touch now. In fact, I asked her, I said, and she was a tough teacher, by the way, from what I understand, you are as well. So I asked her, I said, I hope you didn't find any grammatical errors in my book. Jokingly, and she wrote back, actually, I found a couple. Oh, <laughs> good for her. So she, she helped me fix them, and I had to reprint because I didn't want mistakes in my book that I was bringing to schools. And so we have stayed in touch. Would you consider yourself a tough teacher like that? I have high expectations. And I tell the students, I have high expectations, but no higher than yours, only you won't admit it. Do all you guys think that she will be stuck in your head as you're in college or wherever you are in life thinking? Absolutely, yes. What would she be thinking of what I'm writing yeah. or what I'm doing? For sure, and she makes these little sound effects. Oh, or like if we make a mistake or something, then I'm just gonna have that replaying in my head. Or if I get a paper back and there's like a comma mistake, I'm gonna be like, Mrs. Luton would be so disappointed. <laughs> and a big thing that she has with her students is she'll show us all the time emails that she gets from all of her students with errors that they see around their campuses, like punctuation or some type of grammar. And she'll share it with all of us and just pass on the knowledge. <laughs> I must tell you, I found a small error in the email that she sent to me. <laughs> I don't believe it. Really? I don't believe That's it. Just between us. I don't believe it. <laughs> this is next for you as you, you look at the seniors getting ready to graduate. You have this classroom full of so many memories. What's next for you? I don't know. More memories and more good students, I think. Because I love to teach. I have a great deal of faith in young people. And I tell them, you know, you're going to have jobs that don't even exist now. And things are going to change. You're going to change our lives, the world, etc. And that's the way it's supposed to be. And God gave them talents. I said, use them. Use your intelligence. Make a difference. And I think most of them understand that. And as they do that, you know they'll have a piece of Miss Luton there <laughs> in their mind, <laughs> well, reminding them of certain things. Well, that's okay, too. A passion to teach and compete, that is the heart of her story. Hey, subscribe and leave a comment for a chance to win an autographed copy of one of my first children's books, Willie's Wagon or A Hog Ate My Homework.